Okay, and we're live on the Niche Agent. So today we got a great guest. It's Michael Thorne from Remax in Langley, BC. So Michael, why don't you take a quick second and tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here? Well, uh, I'm a, a Remax agent, like you said, out here in uh, Western Canada. Uh, I've been an agent for just coming up on 21 years. It's hard to believe that that's where it is now. But uh, I think uh, one of the reasons why I, I'm probably on your show is. Uh, uh, great agent out of New Jersey and myself started a, a web show just over a year ago now called Mobile Agent TV, uh, and it's been a great adventure, and, and perhaps that's uh, one of the niches that you want to talk about today on your show. Absolutely. So for you, uh, you said you started this a year ago. What was that inspiration? What kind of got that started and why? Well, it's, 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 it's a great story. Um, I was asked to speak on a panel at Remax R4, which is the international Remax convention in Las Vegas that's held every year in the end of February or, or the beginning of March. And I was, I, I was going to be on a panel with another agent uh, who's now my co-host, uh, Dave Falk, we're out of New Jersey. And we'd never met before. We'd never communicated. Uh, and I suggested that perhaps the two of us and the moderator should get on a Google Hangout and just get to know each other and talk about what we want to talk about so that we could bring this you know, great value. Uh, Dave's an older guy, been in the business, especially with Remax, for I think 35 years. I had just moved to Remax from another brand. Uh, I'll, I'll say that I'm a younger guy. And, uh, but we saw the business the exact same way. We interacted, we engaged the same way. And, and the moderator, Kevin Northrup from uh, Remax LLC in Denver, just uh, made an offhand comment, you know, you guys need your own show. And I kind of chuckled, and we moved along, and we finished that meeting. And, and about uh, three or four days later, we got another Google Hangout just to iron up things before we headed off to Las Vegas. And uh, Kevin made the same comment. You guys, need a, you guys need your own TV show or your own web show. And it sort of stuck with me. So I called Dave the next day, and I said, what do you think? He said, yeah, let's do it. And we actually went on the air with our very first uh, episode of Mobile Agent TV before Dave and I had ever met in person. Uh, we had already recorded our first episode. So... Um, that's how it started, and we just uh, started doing it from there. And it's been um, been a year, oh, yeah, a year and a, oh, yeah, well over a year, a year and three months or something like that by now. Okay, so it's a weekly show for you then. Yeah, every Friday at 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern, and you can watch uh, live just like we're doing right now. I know your show isn't live, but uh, you can watch live and interact with the other uh, uh, people that are watching as well as our guests and ask questions, and then you can see it uh, as a recording and an audio podcast afterwards too as well. Okay. So what topics do you discuss? Is there something specifically you go into? Like, I've seen a few of the episodes, but if our listeners haven't, what can you tell us a bit about the actual show itself? Well, it's sort of gone off in, in different directions. Originally, I mean, mobile agent TV, I think there's, a, there's an enormous shift happening in our real estate industry um, like we've never seen it before, and, and, and the shift will continue, uh, and, and this sort of uh, uh, new stuff is always going to happen now. My career was very consistent for about 15 years, and there wasn't huge changes. The fax machine came in, uh, email came in, and that was about the biggest changes that happened in the first 15 years. And so we wanted to sort of take on tech and take on uh, the fact that things are changing and the way our business uh, has, 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 can be done has changed dramatically. But we didn't want to be the people that always bring in that information. So we have a guest on every week, uh, you know, the top smartest people in our industry all across North America come on and, and, and share what they're, what they're best at. And now that the show is, we've done 56 episodes or something like that. Uh, it's just not all about tech, best practices, um, marketing, uh, design, um, whatever it is. We just reach out and we try to help agents get better at, at, at what they do. And uh, Dave and I have definitely found out that we're the people that have benefited from, from the show the most. We're on the front lines like you. We get to ask questions, and, and, and our, the way we do our job has gotten uh, a lot better in the last year. Yeah, it's a it's a selfish approach, but it benefits everybody. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. So can you talk about some of the kind of guests you've had, or some of the names you've had on there, so people can get a, an idea and a scope? Absolutely. I mean, we, we, Ryan, you and I talked about this before we got on the air right here. Is it, it, the one thing that I'm amazed about is everyone that we've reached out to ha, has come on come on the show um, and have shared so openly. I, I think that's a misconception in our industry that we are all holding secrets. But I'll. I'll I'll name drop uh, if you want me to name drop, but uh, yeah. we've had Katie Lance has been on the show a couple times. She's been a, a, a great uh, a great friend of the show. Uh, we've had Chris Smith, um, Valerie Garcia from Ontario Atlantic Remax is one of our favorite guests. Uh, we've had her on the show a number of times. Uh, Travis Robertson, 
uh, is sort of an international uh, speaker on real estate, has come on the show a couple times. Uh, Chris Spiker was one of our very, very favorite guests. Uh, we've had, we've had, we did a live show in Las Vegas, and our first guest on the show was Dave Linegar, um, who who founded Remax uh, back in the '70s, which was a huge honor to have him come on the show and, and, and talk. Uh, we've had just a ton of great guests. I know I'm leaving out amazing names, but uh, just a really ton of great people um, that that come on and, and and share really, really openly about what they do. I found that the big producers and people that are really secure in what they're doing have no no fear. In, uh, in sharing their secrets, which I think I think a lot of agents just don't think that they can reach out to the top producers in their neighborhood and sit down and have a cup of coffee and learn from them. Uh, and I think there's a huge opportunity there. Yeah, and that's I found the same on the with the show that people are more than happy to share exactly what they're doing. Though, and if if they want to contact them, they say, "Here's my phone number. Here's my cell phone number. Contact me." It's they're not this celebrity that's in Hollywood that's a has an entourage behind them. They're they're real people who are doing real business, and they're more than happy to share. Absolutely. So you sell real estate. It's not just doing a show. So can you talk a bit about your real estate business itself, and then kind of how that rolls into the the show as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I work on an amazing team with two other agents, uh, Jordan Amazing, Trisha Bongers. We have a, a boutique real estate office, a paperless office, uh, in a really boutique neighborhood in Langley, in Fort Langley, which was the first uh, provincial capital of uh, of the area. It's kind of got an old historic feel to uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, we got a little bistro set out front, and we sit and people come by and talk to us. Um, so that was a big push. We've been paperless for about seven years, and we really wanted to push the envelope and, and, and build something, an office that looked and interacted differently. We wanted the office to be about the consumer and not actually about the agent. Um, so we've always sort of pushed the envelope when it comes to technology. We do a lot of video in a lot of different ways. Um, we, we've tried to position ourselves as the social mayor of our community um, through through a marketing strategy. I think you've had Jeff Thibodeau on the show uh, who, who talked very, very similarly about what we're doing. And I know that you've had Kelly Scar on who paperlessly you know, is someone that I've, we've, we've looked to and, and that have been doing something similar to what we have. Um, so what we do, try to do is we try to be larger than the real estate transaction. Um, that's what we've done with our community brand. Uh, we have a couple of them, but my North Langley is our most uh, significantly successful one. Uh, and mobile agent TV is is the opportunity to very, be very niche, have a niche audience, but to be larger than the transaction, larger than the uh, gen, just real estate. And I think that's where a lot of opportunities really lie in in, in being very laser focused on who you want to talk to, but to be larger than what, what we do day in and day out. I think that's where you have an opportunity to bring tons of value. Absolutely, and that's really what it's about. It's the consumer's end of it. A lot of agents get hung up, like you said, in the transaction themselves, selling that, getting the commission. And if you put the consumer first, your business is going to grow. Uh, absolutely. So, how has mobile agent TV increased your business? How has it helped your business? Is the consumer seeing that side of it, or is that something you kind of keep two separate worlds, or what's that? Yeah, like? definitely, definitely. So, uh, so, I mean, a separate world. I mean, if you happen to Google my name, I'm, I'm sure you're, you, you, you'll stumble up, uh, upon it. Uh, we've really built the My North Langley brand and the This Is Fort Langley brand for our consumer. Uh, they're the people that are in our neighborhood that are likely to do um, real estate with us. Uh, the other opportunity that my, or that Mobile Agent TV, TV brought for us was to, to develop a really strong network of agents throughout North America that we could interact with, um, both uh, for business purposes, uh, sending business, referral business, but also just to sort of learn from them and interact with them. Um, you know, I, I really think the more time we spend around people that are doing business better than us uh, really improves, improves who we are and how we do business. So our clients absolutely win from me being able to sit down with people and ask them questions and, and see what, you know, other people are doing. We get so bogged down in the day-to-day -day activities of our job that we forget there's another way of potentially doing it. And when we have a guest come on, they say something, and I go, wow, I never saw it that way or never thought yeah. of it as an opportunity. And you go out there and you test out to see if it works or not. And, and I think that's where the real opportunity is to, to get these little nuggets, just these small ways of improving your business. Um, enough of those small little decisions that improve your business over a long term will make you a far better agent. And that's I've said that from the very beginning when I started the show is it's it's not this drastic one giant change to your business that's going to make the difference. It's those small little things. If you can go to a convention, if you can listen to a podcast, if you can read a blog, and you can implement, the key is implement, a small little thing, you learn some technique that it's going to drastically change your business. Either make it better, make you more money, make it better for the consumer, and it's it's amazing how those small those little changes are. Yeah, so, like I'll like I'll just, or just on that note, like I'll talk on yeah. stage about about how we go about being completely paperless, and I mean completely paperless. If someone comes through the door right now and asks for a pen, 
for directions. We we don't have one. But yeah. you know, I'll get on stage and I'll say over an hour, you know, here's how we 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 how we're completely paperless from the transaction to the listing presentations to the showings to the completion to the deposit check. And afterwards, people come up and they're absolutely overwhelmed by the information that 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 we've provided them. But I forget that we've implemented in being paperless for seven years, right. and we're getting better and better and better at it. And here I am in one hour dumping all this stuff on them. And I think I'm not trying to have them do exactly what we're doing. I'm just trying to encourage them to see here's what's up, here's what's possible. Just yeah. start moving in that direction. Yeah. And like you say, it, you can't make these huge drastic shifts because it, it'll interrupt the day-to-day -day activities of moving your business forward. So uh, when we talk about opportunities, you're right. You have to sort of bite off a little bit at a time and, and, and get good at it and then continue to continue to, to improve and move forward because – the way our industry is going is not going to go away. It will be different, but it's not going to go away. We're, we're in, it, there's been a shift, and I think that some people are absolutely aware of it, and some people are, are trying to ignore it, but, but it's going to be drastically different for a lot of agents in the next few years, yeah. for sure, I think. And again, by implementing those small changes now, while things change, you're going to be, you, you'll be caught up, whereas you don't, people are going to wait, they're going to hold off, they're going to resist it, and then once that shift really happens, it's going to be way too late. They can't make that drastic change. They can't jump in and be completely paperless because they haven't made those changes. So it is the small things that make it different. Absolutely. Well, it's, I, I taught a class last week at uh, an office across the other side of the city, and uh, I was talking about database, just the importance of your database. And it, it, it blew my mind how many agents do not have a database or don't use their database. And it's not a fancy thing. You don't need to have the latest and the greatest, but it's just small things that people don't even implement that they should. And yeah, I said, we, just start adding names. I said, put even if you use a, a sheet of paper and just write down people you know, start with that. Yeah, it shocked me too. We did a series of uh, of shows uh, putting the best real estate CRMs head to head, and we just had agents come on and talk about the pros and cons of each one. And in that process, uh, I had reached out to a bunch of agents and, and asked what CRMs they're using. Um, shocked by the number of agents that don't have a CRM. Yeah, I, or even know what it is. <laughs> or, yeah, exactly. I, I just... I. Uh, that that uh, that baffled me. I was I was it was probably about sixty percent had and forty percent didn't, and that's a high number not to have a database of some kind. Yeah. So for you with your business, how has this changed your business, your your real estate business, doing this show? I mean, obviously there's been growing your business and growing yourself, but what things have you personally implemented into your own business that you've taken away from this? Yeah, I think of a, a lot of real subtle techniques. Um, you know, I think the most drastic thing that's changed um, for us was Bomb Bomb. I don't know if you're familiar with the platform. Uh, I, I get accused all the time for being on the payroll of Bomb Bomb because I won't shut up about it. But uh, we were going to have them on the show. I think back in episode like 28 or something like that, and we had a bunch of a bunch of our audience said, you know, you need to have these guys on. Um, so I reached out to him and I thought, you know, it'd be unfair to have him on a show without sort of test driving the, the product myself. So um, Ethan Butte from Bomb Bomb reached out to me and sent me a, a personal email, video email, and uh, it shocked me how different it was and how impactful it was. Uh, I was uh, I signed up that moment and and I signed, I send out multiple Bomb Bombs a day, one on one one on one video. Uh, that's been the biggest change to our business uh, since the show. There's a bunch of those little things um, that, that have added up to a, a better client experience. But if I were to pick one, um, that would be the one for me. Well, so how has it changed your business? I mean, obviously getting personal, I'm sure your clients get the other experience, but what kind of things have you seen it do? I just think it's a diff completely different experience. We, we, we send out our... Um, we our our mobile agent TV newsletter goes out as a video a couple days before the show, just letting our audience know who the guest is and and what we're going to be chatting about. Uh, we, we we communicate with our past clients through video. Uh, video just changes things. I mean, it's a fundamentally different experience watching one of your episodes where there is video and watching one of your episodes when there's not. Yeah. But it, you can't even say that it's the same meaning. I mean, you'll see the fact that I'm using my hands, that I'm leaning forward, that, that you know, whatever it is, it's just a fundamentally different way of communicating. Yeah. I'm, dis I'm, I'm, I'm dyslexic, so okay. does that mean feedback? Does that mean feedback? Do you feedback? Do you feedback? I get feedback. Um, you, know, we, we, uh, you know, we do a lot of video, and I just think it's like I'm dyslexic. For me, just don't pick up my cell phone to cut a video to a client, so I really just say thank you so much for the referral or you know, uh, whatever it is, it's just such a different experience. Video is a game changer in our industry, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I know. I was. I recorded that. Uh, the actual guest was in house with me. He was across the desk from me, and I was recording it 
I was watching him talk. We were having a conversation, and then I started realizing I'm nodding my head. I'm agreeing. I'm saying yes, but that doesn't come across in the audio, and the people can't see me going, oh, yeah, uh-huh, agreeing, and and I realize, yeah, that there people are missing out on the other side of it. They're just hearing the audio, so video is huge, and it's not expensive. It's easy no. to do once you learn the basics of it, so it's definitely something that people should be implementing. Yeah, and in and, and a lot of different well, levels. I mean, we do a lot of really high-end polished video, and I. but I, I think today, or I, right now, the most video I send out is one-on-one video with my, with my iPhone. And it's, yeah. it's shaky, there's no intro, there's no intro, there's no background music. We do that, but I think for building relationships and communicating, video changes the game instantly. I think it's a, I think it's a really amazing tool. And I think the key with that, too, is just start. It's You don't have to have a full studio with lighting and everything. It's just send out a few videos. I talked to some of the agents in my office, and I said, just send a Facebook video saying happy birthday to someone. Ask how people are doing. Use something like Bomb Bomb or whatever. You don't have to have a whole studio to, to be effective. And you'll probably find you'll get more from it just doing those realistic, real connection, easy videos. Yeah, I, I was uh, driving through my neighborhood the other day, and I noticed a for sale sign uh, about two doors down from a house that I sold about six months ago. And what, so when, when that homeowner comes home, what, what's the first thing they're going to think about? They're going to think, hey, my neighbor two doors down. I wonder what it's on the market for. I wonder what they're asking. I, want, I mean, that's just human nature. That's what we want to know. So I was able to open up for my cell phone, search it on our MLS. On my, I found out what the, what the price was, stood in front of the house and said, hey, Tom and June, you know, you just come home. I'm sure you're curious about what the property next door for you is on the market for. Here's what it's for. I mean, just simple opportunities like that. I mean, talk about blowing their mind. And if you're trying to create this past client base that are that are out there, they're advocates for you. There's no better way to do that than than touching them through video. Because, you know, the the beautiful thing about a lot of this stuff is the average agent isn't going to do it. The the ability to differentiate yourself now is 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 more impactful than ever, in my opinion. And take it to use it to your advantage, knowing that agents aren't going to implement it. Because I taught a video class in my office two or three months ago. I had 30 people in there. Went through the whole thing. They all agreed, oh, yeah, video is important. They all understood how, why they should be doing it, how, what types of videos they should be doing. Oh, yeah, it's not expensive. I can be doing that. And then at the end of the class, I said, okay, so who's going to implement video? There was two people who were like, hmm. Yeah. So the opportunities are there. And I said, you go if you teach that class anywhere, you're going to get the same results. The same numbers of people are not going to be doing video, and there's that much opportunity for you to be doing it. When, but when we go back and look at the, 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 the genesis of Mobile Agent TV, if Dave and I had done four or five episodes and it didn't work, and it wasn't something that we were into doing and we didn't see the value in it, we would have, we would have stopped. I, I would have learned five or, five or six really great lessons from it. I would have been a better agent. I would have been a better person from it. This fear of failure. I, I don't understand why you wouldn't go out there and find do video and say, okay, at least I tried it and it didn't work for me, or at least I tried it and it didn't work and now I know how to get better. I love failing. I love failing at everything we do because that's that's why 65-year-old people are smarter than 23-year-old kids is because they've had they've had tough times. They've learned lessons. They're wiser. But to go through life and then not take those chances and not find out what worked or what didn't work or this ad worked and this ad didn't work and, and why and, and, and analyze that, uh, it's, it's crazy to me the amount of people that, that – nod their head like you say, it sounds great, I totally agree, but I'm not going to do it because it, I might look silly on camera or it might not be easy. Uh, that's that, I don't understand that mindset. And I find especially with niches, because if someone is doing a niche, they may attempt to start it. They may figure, okay, I'm going to try a niche, I'm going to specialize in condos. They get started with it, they do it for a week and then go, oh, it didn't work. And they give up. And there, there could have been a pot of gold on the other side of that if they just went through with it, tried something attempted to either fix it, get better at it, or realize that's not what they want to go with it. And a lot of people never even get to that point because they're too afraid to fail. Yeah, I mean, if we talk about your show, if you release a show once a quarter, I mean, no no one would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't grant, gain traction. There's the yeah. consistency that's hard about it. Uh, m- monthly updates and you skip three months and then you start doing a monthly update to your farm area again, that's not going to work. Blogging, if you think you can blog once every 45 days and somehow that you're going to get SEO benefit from that, you're not. Consistency is a very hard thing and I think a lot of people bite off more than they can chew and they're trying to be consistent in too many different areas. Find out what, for me, it's play to your strengths, right? I'm not, I can't write. Video is easy for me because I don't have to write. There's no spelling errors in video. <laughs> um, so, so I find it a lot easier. So 
um, do find out what your strengths are and play to those strengths and, and don't try to be everything to everybody. That's another lesson that that we I've definitely learned over the last six or seven years in real estate is um, you know, if you don't like the, that I'm a little more laid back than my business partner Jorda, then go work with Jorda. She's an awesome agent. She's fantastic at her job. But I'm a little bit more laid back, and, and so I tend to I tend to uh, attract that type of client. And in the in the long run, that's who I want to work with. I want to work with someone that's like me. So the fact that you don't put out your personality, you don't let people get to know who you are, then you don't get to attract the people that are actually going to want to work with you and that you're going to have fun working with. I mean, there's enough business out there. Find the people that you actually want to work with. Yeah, that's part of the niche agent. And it's part about finding your niche and finding that target audience that you want to work with, and you'll do way better than trying to please uh, p please everybody. And so, enjoy it. And enjoy exactly. It. And if you're not, unless you're yeah. getting paid a crap load of money for it, then right. find something you do enjoy. Yeah. So what are some takeaways that you could share with the niche agent from the things you've learned? Like you said bomb bomb is the one for you, but yeah. any takeaways that you've from interviewing the other guests for people who are, are trying to find a niche or master their niche? Well, you know, I think the, the I mean the large, the best example I can give and, and, and I and I give it when I'm talking about technology or social media or, and it and it really plays into my North Langley, it's played into mobile agent TV, it's played in a lot of our successes. And it's a story about the Michelin Tire Company. Um, about a hundred years ago in, in, in France, the Michelin Tire Company realizes that they weren't selling enough tires. And so the reason why they weren't selling enough tires is because the people weren't driving their cars enough. You know, the car was a fairly new invention and they weren't driving. So they went over the hillside of France and they rated and reviewed all these great restaurants that were sort of out of town. And they put this great review guide together with really good, meaningful information about these restaurants. Now, even to today, the Michelin star is one of the most prestigious things any restaurant or chef can receive. So it encouraged these people from the city to drive 45 minutes out to have a great meal because the information was accurate and meaningful. They had to drive 45 minutes back home, and because of that, they were wearing out their tires. But because they had the social equity with the Michelin brand, when they went to replace their tires, that they had worn out by going to these restaurants, they purchased Michelin tires. So the thought of you having to build your brand or your niche within the the, the title, uh, what a title search and what subject removals and what listing contracts mean, your opportunity to be larger than the real estate transaction for us now to be the social mayor of our community where we're the go-to person when there's a dog lost or when someone needs to advertise their amateur school fundraiser because they want to build a new playground. That's us. That's who we are. Oh, and we also happen to sell real estate. Um, yeah. Building that know, like, and trust or mobile agent TV for us to be larger than just any individual agent to be the voice of, uh, or not to be the voice, but to be the outlet of all these really smart people in our industry with other agents across North America can sort of listen in and, and get their nuggets of wisdom uh, has benefited of us in a very real way in our business so find an opportunity to be larger than the actual real estate transaction I think one of the huge benefits of it is if you've ever been on a beer league baseball team or a hockey team you've probably done business with those people that are on your team because they know like and trust you but before the game started you didn't say hey let's keep an eye on number 14 on the right wing uh, because he's really, really fast. And oh, by the way, I have an open house Saturday from 1 to 3. No, you didn't have to say that. Yeah. They just used you because they knew who you were. So now you have an opportunity with today's social, today's marketing, to have a 1,000 people on your beer league softball team. And they're all going to use you for that same reason. So I think the opportunity is, is you don't have to be at the zero uh, moment of truth when they're ready to buy and sell. They're going to make the decision to buy and sell, but they've already decided to use you two years earlier because they know, like, and trust you. And so whether that's farming or whether that's video or whether whatever it is, you're building a relationship with that potential consumer far before they're ready to actually use you. So agents who think that they can still hold open houses, which if you're good at it, do it. There's definitely a niche in open houses, no doubt about it. But if I've already built a relationship with that client two years prior, they happen to come through your open house and... You, you don't have a shot at that person as your client because they're mine from two years before. So I think that's a huge opportunity. Um, and I think there's a lot of agents that have come on the show that are a lot larger uh, than, than the real estate transaction. A lot of agents jabbing uh, Gary Vaynerchuk style and right hooking later on uh, than just throwing right hooks. I think that's that's a, a lot of really successful people coming on the show. And, and, and the Lee Browns who's just a unreal agent or, or a Chris Spiker doing huge volume, they 
really, really authentically care about their client, really, really care, and they deliver uh, what they promise they're going to deliver, and and, um, and that's I think that's a really big part about being a really great agent is this repeat referral. You're building a business, not being transactional. Yeah. I think for agents, that's hard to get over being transactional and to be a business owner, and you do own a business. Yeah, and if you even look at how people do their business plan, they plan it for a year. And they're, they're saying, okay, I got to do X amount of deals per year. They're getting started in the business. I need to do this much. And they look at that transaction. I'm like, you should be looking at what, how many deals am I doing in seven years or ten years. And you have to be laying out your business long term. Now it's going to change. It's going to tweak. You're going to alter it as you go along. But uh, working with a client now who may not be selling for three years, still stay in contact with him. I remember when I first got started, there was an agent in my office, cold caller. His definition was if they're not buying a home in the next two weeks, they're garbage. On to the next. And that works for people. That's not how I worked. And he said, oh, I chuck them in the garbage. I said, I'll take your garbage. And I'll said, I'll pay you a 10% referral fee for everybody to get to your garbage. Because I know the value is in that weak business. So it blows my mind how many agents just think of that next deal because they got to pay their bills. Now, I understand when you're getting started out, it's it's tough to, to you know, you can't, you don't have the money or the... Yeah, I, I, I really think the opportunity is in new agents. You know, the new agents have the time to go out there. Listen, if you want to be the number one agent in your neighborhood, go do a video in front of every one of your elementary schools and say, here's what this elementary school offers. It's late immersion. It's got this. It's got this amenity. It's close to this. It's this. It's got this sort of a track record. You'll be the number one agent doing video in your neighborhood that week. So, but because you have the time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, busy agents, I don't have, I mean, that's something we're doing, but... But uh, we also have a team that's focused on, you know, providing great content. You know, there's a lot of agents out there that say, I understand the SEO benefit of blogging. I understand the value of being number three in Google, but I don't have the opportunity. I don't have the time to blog once a week. A new agent does. You know, you have all these opportunities as a new agent to do the things that the other agents aren't going to do. Niche out that sort of, you know, um, opportunity and, and tackle that. I think that's a that's a because when I first started in the business, the only option of generating business was sphere of influence. I was 19 years old. I had no sphere of influence that was going to use me. All my kids, all my buddies were off to university. Didn't have a dime. Door knocking or cold calling. That was the only platform, or maybe ads, newspaper, right out of the budget. But now, with an iPhone and a YouTube account, you can go crush your neighborhood in video, or you can start a Facebook a page about your community, or you can start mobile agent TV. You could, anyone could do any of these things, yeah. which did not exist when I got into this business. So I, I think there's an opportunity for new agents to to do the things that the other agents aren't going to do and pick out your niche and get really, really, really good at it. And that's exactly why I started this podcast because I know there's so many opportunities for people to do it, very inexpensive ways. And I wanted to show other agents that you can do it because if agents get into a brokerage and they basically tell them, pick up the phone book, door knock, do open houses, and that's the 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 ideas they're getting. They don't know there's a whole other world out there, and I wanted to show people that there, there's a ton of options, and you can be doing a ton of different things. And there's, like you said, there's enough business for everybody to go around. And there's not one right way. I mean, exactly. the, the way the way I'm building my business isn't the only way to do it. And I think yeah. we were told for so many years in this business, there's one way to do this business. I know that there's. Dozens of ways. If you are unbelievable at converting open houses, if that's where you are and you just have that skill set, no, no harm, no foul. Go ahead and do that. I think you're yep. going to have diminishing numbers as we go along, but go ahead and do that. I think yep. there's definitely an opportunity there. But but there's there's way more opportunities now to play to your strengths than there ever was before. Mm -hmm. I mean, just find out what you're really, really, really good at and, and, and knock it out of the park and, and be consistent. And don't think that you can do it overnight. And, and the other thing, too, is don't listen to other agents that tell you it's not going to work. <laughs> Yeah. You know, a uh, lot, lot of agents start telling you it's not going to work when they start getting uncomfortable. The fact that you're actually doing something that they don't, they know they don't have the guts to do. Yeah. You know, you start doing video, people are going to tell you that's not going to work. It's because they deep down know that they should be doing video and they're not going to do it. So yeah. uh, there's a huge opportunity out there for tons of niches. And that's I created the ebook. I'm selflessly plug my own ebook on my own podcast, the 101 niche uh, real estate markets to show people. That's just the ones that I came up with that I knew. There are literally 101 and more ways for you to do this business, and they all can work if you do it right. So Absolutely. you actually you took the question I was going to ask was about if you were a new agent, what would you do? So uh, that's a great takeaway. So is there any other last piece of golden nugget business that you or uh, idea that you can share with our audience? So if they're interested or trying to find a niche or any takeaway that you can give? Sure. I, I mean, I, this is what amazes me to, uh, now and where we are with, with with real estate and just our culture in general. 
you know, I'll get off stage, I'll be talking about technology or social media, and someone will come up to me and goes, where do you find out all this information? That's incredible. And I'm like, Google, like YouTube, like anything you want to know is out there. The only thing missing in a lot of people is curiosity. So, so the reason why you don't know how to build a WordPress site, which go ahead and hire a professional to do that. I'm not saying that you need to do it, but if you wanted to do it, there is some 12-year-old nerd from London that will show you step by step on YouTube how to set up your your WordPress account or how to do video or how to edit that. It's only about you being curious now. You have to start to sort of flex this muscle of curiosity and once you start implementing the, the, the odd little thing in your business and you see the return on it, video it has an ROI like no other. Like I just believe it has like I think oh, I know Raj Kazar, who's been on the show a couple times, awesome agent out of Anaheim, just does killer, killer video. He says the ROI of video is ridiculous. That's the quote, and I and it, it is. <laughs> but 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 if you want to learn how to do it, you just there's someone that will teach you online. Just get curious about it every week. Choose like your podcast or the the water cooler with Chris Smith and Jimmy Mackin, and just listen. Get curious. The information's out there. If you if you have your fingers in your ears, I had a, I had a lady ask me after I got off stage uh, and I was talking about, I think, s storytelling with video. She said, oh, this is awesome. When is this whole thing going to blow over? And I, <laughs> and I, it's not going to blow over. So if you're not starting to get curious now, we're, we're, we're in the law of divergence. You know, there's a little bit of separation, but it's going to get separate real, real quick. You have to start flexing your curiosity Find out what works for you. Find out what, what your strengths are. Start doing it. Find people in your neighborhood that are doing it really, really well. Reach out to them. Find people now with this ability. You could get on a one-on-one -on -one Google Hangout with an agent in Arizona who's doing something that you think is very, very interesting and pick their brain for 10 minutes. They'll give you 10 minutes. I know they'll give you 10 minutes. Yeah. It's only about curiosity. Get, get really curious about other people doing stuff and, and get better at your job. And, and ultimately to serve the client. Exactly, yeah. And I think having the passion behind it, just watching you speak, you can see it. You have that passion behind it, and if you have something that you are passionate about, follow that and put that behind your niche. So if there is a market, an, a demographic, something you care about, put that behind it, and it's going to make it that much more better because when you are passionate about it and you care, you'll get better results, you'll stick with it longer, you'll, you'll connect with people better. And Yeah, I mean, absolutely, I, I agree. Like, if... if we did my North Langley or Jeff Thibodeau does uh, Brantford Homes, and he didn't really like his community, and he was just doing it because he thought it was a good play for business. The consumer will see that in you. If 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 the people that watch our show realize I didn't really even care about the guests and I wasn't interested in the topic, people will see that. And so that's great advice, Ryan. To if you are going to pick your niche. The great thing is you get to do something you you like doing, yeah. but it also will will come across very, very authentic. I think our BS raters, our, 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 our radars, are at an all-time high as far as how good they are. I think people know instantly when you're not being authentic. Um, I, I forget who said it the other day uh, on our show was talking about, it's like watching the uh, salesman in a late-night infomercial. You know. It, it's clear he's selling you something and it comes across so hollow. Now, we still get sucked into it because it's 1 o'clock in the morning, but um, but I think that authenticity is is a really important place. So find the niche that you really like and you really believe in and the rest of it is easy. Awesome. Well, Mike, Michael, we appreciate you being on the show. You gave a great amount of information and for the other agents who want to find out what's going on on your show, they can check it out. So why don't you tell us how they can connect with you and where they can find you. Sure. Uh, mobile agent. Thanks, Ryan. Mobileagency.com. You can find all of our past episodes. You can actually watch the show live there too. We embed it uh, right into uh, right into our uh, blog at mobileagenttv.com. You can get us on Twitter at mobileagenttv. I'm a big Twitter. I know that you're a Facebook guy. I love Twitter. I think it's amazing. Um, you can find us on Stitcher Radio and on iTunes if you want to just listen to the audio uh, part of it. And uh, yeah, 56 episodes. Uh, we cover a ton of topics and uh, we'll do it. Uh, Dave and I will continue to do it as long as it's fun and it's helping other agents uh, throughout North America. We won't. We, it's, it's, it's too much fun. Awesome. Well, again, thank you for being on the show and thank you for sharing that great information. I know the viewers are going to really enjoy it, so we appreciate it and maybe we'll have you on. I was thinking about maybe doing a video um, 
panel. We could have a couple different people on and do a hangout. And I would love it. A couple different people on. So thanks for having me, Ryan. It was a blast. Thanks. Have a good one. Thanks.